Nearby, at beautiful Lago di Garda, I have a chance to resolve it. I arrive in the picturesque waterside town of Malsacine, crowned with a fantastic medieval castle. This is the kind of place where you stroll narrow streets, eat gelato, and relax by sunny shores. But I have a slightly more exhilarating agenda. Exactly a year ago, I launched a paraglider from those mountains, flew it over this lake, and thousands of meters above it, I performed an extreme maneuver called a full stall, which has always terrified me. You pull the brakes down, 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 until the wing cranks back and then ceases to fly. It flaps back suddenly and violently, just a rag above you in the sky. It's a useful technique, but I made a debacle out of it. Bam, there it goes. Lucky I didn't flop into the damn water. This year I'm back, and although it still scares me, I'm gonna nail it. There's only one problem. I don't have a paraglider with me, but I'll figure that out. The next day I meet with paragliding legends, Michael Nessler, his wife Gudrun, and colleague Alessio. These guys are ace at acro, master instructors, and test pilots for leading paragliding brands. They're in Garda running what is called an SIV course, giving folks like me a chance to try out new techniques. With the comfort of an expert talking you through it, the safety net of the water, and the Italian Red Cross waiting if you plunge. I get there early and feel the wind. Sky looks good. I envision my approach. The landing isn't huge and I am rusty like oxidation. But if there's one guy to put your faith in, it's this dude. Michael, Hi. good to see you again, man. Yes, fine. So you're doing the SIV? Sure. I want to do that full stall again. Okay. Do it right this time. I don't have a glider though. We have. You got one? Sure. Yeah. We have a nice prototype, school one. Prototype? Yes. You haven't worked out all the bugs yet? It works, yeah. no problem. Just take it. One for you. <laughs> all right. This is the final test, huh, before yes. you put it on the open market? Of course. All right, if there's any problem, I'll let you know when you pull me there out of the lake. There will not be problems. All right. All right. Okay, man. Okay, see You'll you. be on the radio. Sure. Okay. Without Bye. wasting any time, I head straight up the mountain. Garda is the perfect location to take a safety course because the cable car takes you straight up Monte Baldo, which looms almost 1,700 meters above the lake, giving you plenty of altitude to monkey around before you have to eventually set up your landing. It looked spot on majestic down below, but as I walk towards launch, the weather quickly turns. Monster clouds begin to overdevelop around us. Suddenly, it's way too dangerous to fly. Clouds like these could pull a fragile paraglider in like a vacuum sucks lint. Inside those behemoths, you would either freeze or asphyxiate. I move around the mountain looking for a launchable gap in the clouds, but no luck. So I use the spare time to go over the maneuvers with Alessio and Gudrun. One time is there, if you release completely, nothing happens. But if you release when the wind is going backward, the wind shoot a lot forward of you. And this becomes dangerous because you can't stop the wings. It's going under you could your... fall. You could fall yeah. into the wing? It can happen, that's one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So remember you... me, when you arrive, if you run back, you stay in this position. All right. Basically, make just one mistake of throwing your hands up early, and it's hasta la vista, baby. We fold up the gear and wait it out, hoping that the weather will pass. The weight does nothing but build my anxiety. I'm balanced between the dread of performing on the glider and the fear that I won't even have the chance. And just then, a window opens. It's definitely more windy, but it's launchable and as safe as it's gonna get. For my Lago di Garda experience, I launch now or never. I mean, what could go wrong? Once again, I connect myself to the harness 
and the harness to the glider. Ready, set, go! Oh man, the rust. A bumbling, stumbling launch, caramba. I get into the air, leaving a disapproving crowd behind. It's a smooth cruise over the lake. I have to position myself just right. So even in the worst case, out of control situation, I'll hit the water, not concrete, rock, cable, or rooftop. Checking to make sure my hands are good and even in these brakes, these brake handles. So when I pull down on the wing, it's symmetrical. When I come out of the stall, I don't want one side to reinflate before the other. That'll create um, a spin. Now over the lake, Michael picks me up on the radio. I'm in the slot. It's time. Oh boy. Keep the hands down, keep the hands down, keep the hands down. Mamma mia, what an experience. Woo. It's like having a chair kicked out from beneath you and then plunging into a canyon. The second one comes easier. Hold the brakes, wait till you see the glider appear, and then slowly open it up and hands all the way up. Pow! Now with the scary stuff behind me, it's time to have some fun. My favorite acro technique, the sat. You maybe saw me spiral dive in California. It's also one of my favorite moves on a tandem. But now, I'm gonna take that spiral and push the wing just a little further into a negative motion. Watch the difference. Woo, rock and roll is here to stay. Damn, that's fun. Look at all that altitude I scrub. Whoops. Michael calls me in. It's head for the landing now or take a swim. For fear of overshooting, I zig and I zag on approach and I almost undershoot. Classic. But I'm back on terra firma and feeling like a million bucks. Nothing like a good look into the face of death to make you realize how sweet it is to be alive. In comes my cameraman behind me. Everyone back safe. That was absolutely insane. But now that I've accomplished that, I've got a little loose time on my hands. 